So I went and I sat in the lobby and I just waited. And I waited. And that ring don't like me today. And I waited. And sure enough, just like he said, he remember he I I just I'll never forget that the 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 thought now, the whole moment is just gonna be forever like embedded in my my head. But he picked his little head out, he was just like seven. We about to go right, you coming? I say, yeah, I'm coming, I'll be right there. <laughs> and so, thank you. And so, um, you know, I ended up, remember I was nervous as hell, not even gonna lie. Um, it was actually my first time ever working with him and another writer, artist, producer named Kevin McCall. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Kevin McCall, but yeah, shout out to Kevin McCall, that's my, that's my brother. Um, but we both had the opportunity to work with Chris that night. And literally, I swear, from that moment on, for from there up until now, he when he was working on his fame album, um, he he made me and Kevin a part of his writing team. So everywhere that Chris went, you know, to go write with, if he went to Miami to write for his album, work on his album, me and Kevin went with him. If he went to New York to go write and work on his album, me and Kevin went with him. And you know, just not to state the obvious, but Y'all gotta take opportunities and chances when you see them and when they are available to you. Because that moment forever, it changed my life forever. Like just one little moment changed my life forever. And um, you know, from writing with Chris, you know, uh, in terms of his fame album, I, my first placement ever as a writer is a song called Yet Three Times. I don't know if y'all know Yet Three Times. Yes. But that, thank you. That was the first song I ever got placed. Um, and a little story, a little back history on that song. You know, I didn't know, um, Chris, we were working on Yet Three Times, and a lot of times, you know, we'll be in sessions, and they'll be like, all right, we're going we gonna to go out for a little bit, and we'll be back. I'm like, all right, cool. So that was the first time he had ever left me in the studio alone for me to like him trusting me to write anything by myself. And he's like, all right, he's like, yeah, he's like, well, go ahead and write the second verse out. I'm gonna cut it when I get back. And I was like, okay, like, all right. So the second he stepped foot out of that studio, I kid you not, I think I must have sweat bullets from the time he was gone to the time he came back. Um, I think I wrote that verse, the second verse, probably like, Good Sam times, not even lying about Sam times. Um, and I remember Brian, the engineer, saying, "Okay, Sam, I think he's, I think he's good. I think he's on his way back." As soon as like I said, "Okay, I'll wait. all right, I'm good." That's the verse I'm gonna go with. And he walked in, and I was sitting way back in the corner, like while he listened to it, and I was just like watching him. He was just like, it's like, all right, cool, load it up. I'm gonna cut it. And I think I almost passed out. <laughs> um, but I, just, I was just happy, and I, I appreciate that opportunity. It was my first placement ever. Um, aside from writing yet three times with Chris, um, I also was able to write, you know, Wet the Bed was another record that I wrote with him. Um, strip, y'all some hot asses. <laughs> they back that ooh, before I tell you. <laughs> Look, I'm the one to talk, I freaking wrote the record, so. Um, <laughs> but I was able to write Wet the Bed with him featuring Ludacris. Um, I was able to write strip with him. Uh, Kevin, Kevin has actually rapped on that one. I was actually um, able to write next to you with him. It was a song featuring Justin Bieber with him. I, and I was freaked out on that set too because I, I really love that record. And well, a lot of times when you write records, you don't know um, if a feature is going to be on it or not. So just the fact that you know we wrote the record, I was already happy with the fact that it was even you know, on the album, and then when he made it a single, I was even happier. And then when he put Justin on it, I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, um, you know, that ended up being cool. So I wrote, you know, uh, Next to You with him. Um, aside from that, I wrote, a, ended up writing about seven songs on his fame album with him. And I was featured on a song called She Ain't You with him. And um, that feature came out of nowhere, like, came out of nowhere too. We actually did that record in New York. Um, when I found out that, cause I didn't think that he was going to keep me on on the record. I just figured I was like, maybe just going to demo it and maybe he'll put somebody else on it. Um, I was away on a writing trip when I found out, hey, so Chris is shooting the She Ain't You video tomorrow. And he wants you to fly back to L.A. and be in the video. And I, I lost, I, I obviously, I, I lost my mind again. But um, that was another really cool moment, uh, cool moment for he and I. Um, aside from, you know, writing seven songs, 
Um, Fame also wrote about seven songs on his Fortune album with him. Um, I wish I had the track listed in front of me because I don't be remember it like that. But um, wrote seven songs, and I'm seeing that I have two duets on his Fortune album with him. One is called Cadillac, and the other one is called uh, Touch Me on, on his Fortune albums. And um, just writing for Chris and working with Chris, period, like it, it, I say all the time, it changed my life. Um, just a little sidebar on it, like people, a lot of people don't understand or, or don't get a chance to, may not ever get a chance to experience and be in a work environment with him, but he is one of the most creative people I think you will ever be able to witness and lay your eyes on in your entire life. Um, when I tell you Chris can cut seven records in a day, and I'm not lying about that, he is absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of being a, a songwriter, I learned so much from him and from Kevin. Um, they, and they, to me, I say all the time, they are like the foundation of my songwriting. They taught me so much. And, um, you know, just, he just don't, Chris don't put himself in a box, especially creatively. Like, if he want to go and, like, scream at the top of his lungs on a record, which I'm sure y'all heard him screaming on record before, he, um, he's going to do that, you know, and he can do everything from, from, you know, doing a pop record that we love, like, you know, yeah, three times to go doing a, you know, a, a urban hood record where he rapping, like, look at me now, and just all across the board, he just, he's absolutely amazing, so... I just have to say shout out to him, that's my brother, I love him. And um, aside from uh, from writing that record, there's another single that's out right now on an artist named Miss Kelly Rowland, who is like a sister to me, but a song of hers called Gone, that I actually had the pleasure um, of performing with her on Black Girls Rock, so I was, I was, it was like a little double moment of excitement because, you know, not only is it a song that I wrote for her, but I actually had a chance to perform it with her on Black Girls Rock, so I was just kind of over the moon and just really excited about that. And um, I will say, like, you know, I know y'all see Kelly on TV, you probably go, oh my gosh, she's so sweet. Like, you think, oh my gosh, so sweet. And I want to say what you see is what you get. She is absolutely, she is one of the sweetest people I have ever had the opportunities to meet and work with. Not to mention, we look at each other and be like, mine and be like, okay, you really look like you can be my sister. Like, so um, I had a chance to write that record with her, and you know, I remember she hit me. Uh, she was like, "Hey," I called her one day. I was like, "Hey, I'm about to, you know, grab a glass of wine and catch a movie and some Italian food. What you doing? You want to go? You know, let's go. You know, do that." And she was just like, "You know, I'm actually um, recording for X Factor." And she was like, "Well, I'll see you at Black Girls, um, Black Girls Rock." I was like, "Yeah, okay, cool." She was like, "Are you performing?" I was just like. No, I said, I think I'm just going to be a black girl on the carpet that rocks. <laughs> and she goes, um, she was like, well, well, I got an idea. I'll call you back. And I was just like, okay, cool. So next thing I know, next day, you know, she hits me. She was like, so do you want to perform Gone With Me on Black Girls Rock? And I wish we weren't over the phone because I would have looked at her like she was stupid. Because that couldn't have been a real question. Like, what do you mean? Do of course I do. So just to be able to be a part of that performance with her. You know, we've, I know we've all been Kelly Rowland fans for forever. Been Destiny Child fans for forever. So that was an amazing experience. Um, just aside from just the songwriting, where, where I am right now is, you know, I'm signed to Atlantic Records, CBE, like I said. And I'm just really happy to, um, you know, just to have my own music out, to be quite honest. I, I never really thought that it would get to this point, um, but I didn't think that it would. I just knew that I just loved music and I just loved to sing. And, you know, writing came along and I, I fell in love with writing, but, you know, um, ended up recording for my album. and. You know, writing records like it won't stop, and you know the record is out. I remember um, the way that Chris even got on the record. I had no idea that he was gonna be on the song, so I cut my version of it, and I, you know, I I love the song. And the next thing I know, they were like, "So listen to this version," and they played it for me, and Chris is singing on it, and I I I think I might have just dropped a tear, like you know, because I've I've been on songs with Chris, you know, on, on his mixtapes, on Boy in Attention, on all of his songs, but for him to want to be on one of mine, like, it meant the world to me, like, the world to me, like, that, 
that boy is really my brother. Like, y'all don't understand, that's my family, and I love him to death. So for him to do that, and I didn't even have to ask him, it, it meant a lot. So, and I, I do have to say, I gotta not only thank him, but I gotta thank y'all because y'all made that record number one. And if it weren't for y'all, it would not be a number one record. So shout out to everybody in this room, and I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. So thank you so much. But, um, but yeah, man, we just had a good time with it. Filming a video, we had a great time filming the video. Chris directed it, and you know, that's something else that he's really great at. Um, and not to mention that the, I had, you know, a good little time filming it because I had some eye candy in there that I could look at. So, uh, shout out to Mr. Darrell Wright because, yeah, he made that day not feel like work at all. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but that was, that was a lot of fun doing it won't stop. Um, and now here we are, we're at the Call Me Crazy But EP and I am extremely, extremely excited about this body of work record like they won't stop um i literally wrote that from my experiences i was dating somebody and that was the only person i wanted to be around like have y'all ever felt like that like you date somebody that's the only person you want to be around and it's the little things that mean so much to you so like when i say like jay zone with your shade zone just to bring me something to eat that was for real, for real what he did. He had his J's on, his shades on. Hey, boo, with your shades on. Uh, and he had his J's on, with his shades on, and he brought me something to eat. And I just thought that was just so sweet, you know? So I put it in a song. I got this thing, and I don't know if y'all heard it before, but I do this thing that I like to call, I, I Taylor Swift that hoe, and I write about what I go through. And so that's what It Won't Stop is about. But the EP is basically, you know, it's talking a little more about, you know, my relationship and things that I've been through and situations that my girlfriends have been through. Because, I I mean, I know, like, how y'all know, we all got girlfriends that go through stuff. If one of them ain't going through it, the other one's going through it. If that one ain't going through it, then you going through it. So the EP is just all about those experiences. And it's talking about the cycle of a relationship, the things that you go through, the good times, the bad times times where you love who you with, the times where you can't stand who you with. And I called it Call Me Crazy, but just because I felt like, you know, in relationships and situations, sometimes you feel like the person you with is acting a little crazy. You know what I mean? They, they act a little out of character, or they may feel like that about you. And, um, you know, but it's, it's always at the end of the day, it's like, well, you know, call me crazy, but, you know, you are the one that, that lied. You know what I mean? Or call me crazy, but... You know, you did this, that, and the other. So when you listen to the EP, if you haven't already, it definitely just tells a story. It's, it's a cycle of a relationship. So, you know, if you don't have it, I hope you get it. And if you do have it, so thank that you. tunes right now, you can get it right on your phone. Yep. Right on your phone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you can get it right now. And I mean, in, in terms of everything else, I just, I'm just having fun with this thing. I just got on tour with K. Michelle. I don't know if any of y'all came out today. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I don't know how many of y'all if y'all were able to catch the show. I think we were here like two weeks ago. Did anybody here catch the show? No? Okay, we gotta next week we gotta come back. We just gotta come back. And y'all gotta catch catch the next one. But um we had a great time on the tour on the road. Um it was Tierra Thomas, myself, and K Michelle and we just had a really good time, you know. K Michelle and that voice is absolutely amazing. She puts on a great show, Tierra Thomas put on a great show with her and her voice and that guitar. So we just had a good time. And you know, like I said, right now for me, it's just definitely all about call me crazy. But, and like I said, I just want to, I just thank all of y'all for being here. So I really appreciate you. And y'all, I really don't think it's that crazy, but he thought it was, he's like, what are you doing that for? He thought it was crazy. But um, I, I definitely do my occasional Instagram Twitter stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Y'all who's done an Instagram Twitter stuff? So is it crazy? No. Say no, men is it crazy? Yes. They do it too. They do it too. Wait, 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 wait. So men, y'all don't Instagram stalk? Have you ever Instagram stalk? Don't lie. Who said one or two times? Exactly. See, they know they do that Instagram stalk, and then you gotta be careful when you're looking at the picture because if you if you might double tap it. I was Instagram stalking one day and I showed my mama the picture. I'm Instagram stalking, I showed my mama, I was like, Mama, look at this picture, look at this. And she don't know Instagram rules or how it works. She was like, 
Oh, that's so cute. I said, you cannot. <laughs> Double tap. The picture, she was like, oh my bad. You're out of my mama, she's crazy. But um, yeah, so it was Instagram stalking, and he was just like, word. So like, you really, like, you really been? I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I mean, you, I mean, if you would just be honest and just tell me what it is from jump, I won't have to Instagram stalk. Thank you. <laughs>